just going to flash some of these examples here. This is behavior from uh, several different types of neurons. Some of these neurons started changing their activity several seconds uh, before. Uh, I don't think that these are spontaneous fluctuations as well they were referred to as uh, earlier. Uh, these are uh, uh, changes in the activity of uh, uh, individual neurons. This is not average uh, 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 noise at the level of uh, uh, scalp uh, EEG signals. Not only did some neurons increase their firing rate, other neurons uh, showed a decrease in their firing rate. Um, and th there are a lot of uh, 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 technical questions that I'm going to skip in the interest of time. Uh, the examples that I showed you, the individual neurons are also reproducible at the level of populations of neurons. We observe this in terms of multi-units, in terms of single units. We observe this in the four different locations that we studied in the frontal lobe and not in other locations in the medial temporal lobe. The results were robust to different ways of defining the baseline. There has been uh, lots and lots of discussions about how to define the baseline in the limit type of task. Essentially, it doesn't matter here. Uh, if you jitter, if you artificially jitter W, I always felt that people were very imprecise in how they report uh, W. There were some discussions earlier about whether W really matters or not. And we think that W does matter in the sense that if we jitter W, uh, we would have gotten different results, at least for uh, jitter amounts uh, in the order of uh, 100 milliseconds or uh, uh, also. We spent uh, more time than I care to admit trying to study whether individual neurons in single trials show gradual changes or abrupt changes. And that's a very hard question, and I, I don't think I have a clear answer on that. I'm happy to discuss that uh, further if anybody's uh, uh, interested. Um, I'm going to skip some of the details of uh, how we use machine learning techniques to decode and make predictions in single trials. This is now pretty standard in neuroscience. We take spikes from this set of neurons, we count the number of spikes, we feed those into a classifier. For the aficionados, we use a support vector machine with a linear kernel. And based on this, we can ask whether we can actually make predictions about when people will or will not make a decision from the activity of a set of uh, uh, individual neurons. And uh, we can actually get uh, uh, relatively accurate in the sense that we can predict uh, when people will make a decision within a couple of hundred milliseconds from the activity of a uh, pseudo-population of uh, a couple of hundred uh, neurons. Uh, we implemented uh, one possible biophysical mechanism by which this could happen, which has to do with uh, projecting the input from a lot of these neurons to a very simple integrate and fire uh, uh, mechanism that would integrate information from many of these neurons and actually execute these uh, when the threshold is crossed. This is similar to the threshold uh, idea that was uh, presented in one of the earlier uh, talks uh, uh, today. We don't have really, uh, any evidence that this is what's, uh, the, the real mechanism by which uh, neurons uh, actually implement the decision, but this is a potentially very, very simple way in which this could uh, happen. We also did some work trying to ask whether we can predict not only when people will make a decision, but also what type of decision uh, such as will do, and we've been somewhat successful in that uh, as well. So uh, I'd like to simply summarize this uh, second part of the talk by arguing that uh, neuronal activity in the frontal lobe uh, precedes volition. Again, this is at the level of individual neurons. Um, I made already uh, a lot of technical points that I'm going to, uh, um, uh, to skip now. Uh, there are, of course, uh, lots of caveats. I'm going to skip most of this. Uh, <coughs> also, of course, very familiar. I'm not trying to argue that we can record the activity of neurons and make predictions about what you're going to have for lunch tomorrow. This is only on a scale of a couple of seconds. This is, uh, in a sense, we are very, very limited in terms of what kind of predictions we can uh, make. So just to uh, uh, drive home the notion of no randomness, I want to make the case that in the case of strong determinism, as it has escaped the attention of any of you, that strong determinism means that absolutely everything should be predictable since the start of the universe all the way up till now. That's a very, very strong version of determinism. I'm not willing to defend that, but I am very willing to defend that next year, in 2018, Argentina will win the World Cup. I'm sorry for the Germans. Uh, finally, uh, uh, I, I actually didn't do any of this work. The people who are actually really important are Itzek Fried, a phenomenal neurosurgeon who implants selectors in these patients. And uh, thanks to him, we were able to do all of these uh, uh, recordings, uh, as well as Rick Bourne, who did all of the recordings in, uh, in, in Macaque Matrix. So I'm going to stop here. I'll put this again just in case.
What is the variability in terms of predicting W as opposed to predicting the actual movement? Uh, it's almost identical. So, so uh, that will be our strongly correlated uh, uh, on a trial by trial basis. And we, have, uh, we uh, could have written the entire paper based on predicting P, and we would have, uh, would have gotten exactly the same uh, results. So, at least in, the, in our hands in this experiment, uh, W is strongly locked to P. And essentially, people don't make a decision and, and wait two seconds until they execute it. So, so basically, they are very, very strongly correlated. They're very, very strongly correlated. Uh, we actually redid the entire paper based on P, and we got exactly the same results. It's just uh, sexier to write people about W, uh, uh, and that's what we did. But, but, but it's identical. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of points. So one is, I, I mean, you mentioned that these are you know, neural recordings, right? And this is the gold standard. Uh, and this is somehow different in terms of the, the, the stochastic explanation from the EEG recording. But I don't think it matters, right? That explanation holds no matter how you record. It doesn't matter how you record the activity. If there are intrinsic fluctuations, and there are at the level of signal neurons, uh, and the initiation of movement tends to coincide with crests in those fluctuations, then you'll recover something not only in the average, but on single trials as well. It doesn't really matter. I don't know any evidence that suggests that these are, uh, uh, there's any randomness in the activity of these uh, of these nodes. I think well, that that's what I was trying to say. There are fluctuations. Uh, there are fluctuations. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. I mean, the, 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 So we were discussing this a little bit over breakfast. Uh, I don't see any randomness in flipping the coin. Uh, we, we can actually uh, use the word random. We can, you, can use, uh, uh, you can flip a coin to see who will uh, play on which side in soccer because it's pretty. But, but, but strictly speaking, I'm using the word randomness to imply quantum mechanics. Uh, and everything that's not quantum mechanics is not random according to this uh, definition. That, 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 that I think is true randomness. And everything else, we can call it randomness, but but, but ultimately, there's a very simple mechanistic, deterministic uh, explanation. Maybe chaotic, maybe strictly dependent on initial conditions. Uh, all sorts of, uh, um, for our eyes, it may be random, but it's not true uh, randomness in the context that's, that's the. Okay. Well, how do you get rid of the random uh, uh, that is, that is not. Uh, I, I don't know. We did exactly the limits experiment. We didn't innovate at all uh, in there. So uh, we ask people to report uh, when they make movement. They, they, they report this motion at this, this time. We call it W. Uh, I, I I don't know. We, we can debate about what exactly that uh, means. There was a talk earlier today that was thought very interesting. The target that the W is. Uh, Particularly uh, uh, relevant. Uh, this is an operational definition, uh, exactly in the limit sense. Uh, nothing. Um, uh, we can debate about what that really means for, for, for subjects. Okay, one more. <laughs> even if you, uh, even if we agree that there are no other quantum domain uh, effects generating randomness in the brain, we have to grant the grounding in motion in the synaptic cleft in the diffusion of you know neurotransmitters across that gap. And in order to minimize the variability of arrival times of neurotransmitter, you want to minimize that cleft difference. The cleft is actually reasonably big. It's not one nanometer, it's you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 nanometers. So why do you think evolution would come up with this big gap that would lead to 
uh, variability in arrival times of neurotransmitters, which will lead to variability in depolarization in BPSPs, which will lead to variability in spike timing. I, I think that's a fascinating question. And, and, and again, I think there may be a lot of useful, uh, 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 evolutionary useful reasons why you may want to have uh, apparent variability. Uh, unfortunately, at least uh, Bjorn's uh, beautiful talk uh, but he was kind to uh, show some of it uh, to, to me. Uh, uh, the question of the zebra, uh, trying to be random in one way or the other. Uh, we can talk about spike timing versus uh, rate codes. And the, I, I think those are, but, but strictly speaking, I, I refer to Brown and Motion as not a random effect, as long as it's not quantum. So, so, but, uh, but, 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 but we can discuss about why, and there may be a lot of the evolutionary advantages, why you may actually want to have uh, some amount of jitter uh, in, in, in spike timing, why you may want to have uh, behaviors that are not perfectly uh, predictable. I'm not against any of that, I'm just, uh, the main distinction I'm drawing is between quantum and not. Uh, and you may disagree. Okay. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, there is no randomness, is everything already determined? I knew you wanted to say that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if anybody wants to bet about this, I'm happy to do There's some rules, so sometimes Argentina is doing sometimes rules. That, that's going to change over the next couple yeah, of decades. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. So now we are, let's thank again. Uh,